Okay, today we're going to talk about yet another way a company can get money. This is called an installment loan. So in an installment loan, the company will borrow the money and they're going to pay back interest and principal at each payment. So instead of waiting until the very end, like we do a bond, we're going to make payments on that principal throughout the life of that loan. So let's see how this works. If I needed to make journal entries, then I would need an amortization schedule. So I'm going to show you how to do an amortization schedule. It's going to be a schedule that's going to tell us what our beginning balance is, what our ending balance is, and how much of our payment goes towards interest and how much of our payment goes towards our reduction of principal. So here's how it's going to work. All right, my beginning carrying value is going to be $100,000 because my problem says that I issued a 100,000 4% five-year installment note and that I have annual payments of 22,463. That means I'm going to make one payment a year for five years and it's going to be paid off at the end of five years. So let's watch and see. So my note payment, that is the cash that I'm going to pay out every year, is never going to change. It's always going to be $22,463. I'm going to put in um, $462.71 because that's the exact amount that I need in order to come down to zero at the end. But that payment is going to be the same every single payment, which is once a year. All right, so how we calculate interest expense. Interest expense is going to be your beginning carrying value times 4% times time. I've written it down here for you. Since this is an annual payment, my time is just 12 months out of 12 months, which is 1. So I can just say like that, or I could actually have left it off and I would get the same amount because this is an annual interest rate right here. And we're going to be making annual payments. All right, so my interest expense for year one is $4,000. All right, I want you to conceptually think about this. I'm paying $22,463. Of that, 4000 is going towards interest. The remaining amount can go towards reducing my principal. That's why I call it my decrease in notes payable. So of that 22463 subtract out how much had to go towards my interest, and the rest of it is left to go towards reducing my note payable. So how much do I owe after that? Well, my 100000 minus my decrease in notes payable is how much I now owe. Let's do another line as practice. My beginning carrying value is going to be the same amount as my ending carrying value, so I start now with that 81537 My note payment, my cash pay, never changes. So I'm going to put that same number in every single time, if I can type right. My interest expense will be my beginning number times 4%. And it should go down each time because my principal's going down, so my interest will go down. That leaves more to go towards my decrease in notes payable. So my note paid minus my interest leaves that. My ending carrying value will be my beginning minus my decrease in notes payable. Let's do one more as practice, then I'll copy my formulas down to finish out this table. My beginning carrying value is the same as my ending carrying value. My note payment never changes. My interest expense will always be beginning carrying value times 4%. So of my payment, I can say minus my interest expense to find out how much decrease my note's payable. And my ending carrying value then will be my beginning carrying value minus my decrease in notes payable. All right, so I should be able to copy this formula down now. And when I do, I can find that after 2019's payment, my ending balance is zero because I have paid off this loan. So let's look and see how this table can help me with my journal entries because that will help it make more sense. So in 2015... What I did is I borrowed this money, so I did this because I wanted cash, right? So I borrowed 100000 and I promised to pay it back. At the end of 2015, and your, and your problems will give you some dates, you're going to make your first payment, okay? So when you make your payment, the easiest part to do is 
skip down here and do your cash because guess what? The amount that you're going to pay for each payment never changes. It is that 2246 2.71 which rounds to 22463. I wanted to show all these numbers just rounded so it doesn't confuse anybody on my little rounding issue that I have going on here. Now it's rounded to 22,463, so it matches this. Um, so your cash that you're going to pay out is always that, right? All right, so looking at this first line item right here, I'm going to have notes payable needs to go down. I make a notes payable go down by debit, so it's going to be 18,463. And then interest expense needs to go up, and I make an interest expense go up with a debit of $4,000. So that will be my payment for this line right here. All right, let's go to 2016 and do the exact same thing. I skip down, I do cash first because that's the easiest one because it's never going to change. All right, how much does my notes payable need to go down? Well, 19201 How much is my interest expense? I look right here, and it's 3,261. I'm going to do the same thing for all five years. Now, what I want to point out is that this number plus this number will always equal my cash paid out. That is because all I've done in this amortization schedule is split up that cash payment between interest expense and notes payable. So it will always work out like that. After I've done all five, if I were to put a note payable in a T account, I would see that I would owe nothing in my note payable. And so this is how you amortize an installment note, and this is how you would make your journal entries for it. So let me know if you have any questions.